the red and black box tells you straight away that this is a Mammut model. It's a Volvo FH05 10x4 with a Powerfinger PK165.002 with a ballast box. And just try saying that with a mouthful of cookies. This model is made by WSI and it has the Mammut model number 410302. Onto the weigh bridge in the box weighs 2 pounds 4 ounces, what is just over 1 kilogram. Let's move on and open the box and see what's inside. The sleeve covers some high quality packaging and there's also a small booklet that we'll look at in a moment. There's a plastic former over the top of foam rubber and then we can carefully lift out the model. Also in the box are some parts and a small bag. The included booklet for the Powerfinger is generic and it covers the operating features of the Powerfinger crane. It does it very well by the use of clear photos and so even for beginners it should be good enough to be able to use the model successfully. As this is a Mammut model there's also a collector card and if we look at that we can see that 600 pieces of this model have been made. There's a small piece of packaging to keep the towing hitch in place but I'm not sure why it wasn't easier just to put that part in the accessory bag. <laughs> For the assembly we'll just put the ballast box on and it clips easily enough onto the fifth wheel. Back to the weigh bridge for the model's weight and it's about one pound seven ounces or 665 grams. Looking at the front of the chassis and the suspension is modelled and the gearbox is visible. From the gearbox the drive shaft to the rear axles has been modelled, but surprisingly there's no drive shaft between axles 4 and 5. The rear axle on this truck steers and that's been modelled, and there are different tyres on the driven and steered axles. The roof of the cab has got the globe trotter name at the front. And it's a very good looking light bar and there are also tiny aerials. The Mammut name is sharply rendered and there's a good looking grille at the front. The headlights and chevrons are very smart and there's a large outrigger box with a realistic number plate. There are very sharp graphics on the side of the cab and as usual for a Mammut model that includes a fleet number. There's a textured step and the wheels look sharp and it's nice to see a highlighted filler cap. Moving towards the rear, the wheel arches and the wheels look very good, and the rear outrigger has graphics applied. However, it cannot be fully retracted, so it sits low. The ballast box has got a detailed cabinet at the front, and the sides are detailed also. At the rear, the lights and the towing hitch are detailed, and the rear board has got the realistic number plate. The Powerfinger crane is highly detailed with a modelled control console and the small graphics add to an authentic appearance. The outrigger is folded up for transport. With the crane operational more detail can be seen including black highlighting to indicate hoses. The ram jackets are plastic and there are sharp Powerfinger graphics on the loader arm. The telescopic sections are intricate and there are many of them. The wall thickness of the sections is very thin and there's a hook at the end. The fly jib is to a similar standard. Back to looking at the chassis and the wheels spin freely enough. And the impressive model engineering is that the linked suspension works on the front two and rear axles. Let's try the model out on the test track and it rolls along well enough. Let's set the steering and you can see that the range of movement is quite limited but it does give you an interesting pose and in practice you can drive along a shallow curve. 
One feature at the rear is the movable fifth wheel, and it has a significant range of movement. The tilting cab performs well and it stays tilted. And then you can see the Volvo engine which also has the Volvo name on it. We close up the cab and move on to displaying the model with a load. In this case a couple of crane hooks, although one of them is very large. To operate the crane we need to set the outriggers and there are two at the front. These can be lowered by unscrewing, but they do have quite a restricted range of movement and they are well short of the supplied spreader plates. We move to the back to extend the outriggers and they are on two stage beams. And here the pads can be screwed down to touch the ground. Lastly there are the outrigger beams at the crane itself and these are two stage with the post rotating. Once they're down pins are supplied to lock them into position but in practice they weren't needed here. Again the pads can be lowered but unfortunately the result is the same, they don't quite get to ground level. So to display the model in service you'll need to provide some kind of blocks to go under the front outriggers. So here's the model set up, the rear outriggers don't really support the weight so they're more for display. But the front outriggers can lift the model up. Now we can move on to open up the crane. And for this you need to have some strong fingers. The hydraulic rams are very stiff and you need to be careful to hold the model in the right place whilst you're doing this. Of course the advantage of the very stiff rams is that the loader crane will hold any pose once you set it. And that's good for a heavy loader crane like this. Extending the telescopic sections is also straightforward. They just slide out with some friction making sure it's not too slippery. One small feature is the foldable rope winch. But the silver hinge looks a bit obtrusive. Here is the crane lifting an office unit. This unit is quite light and the loader crane holds it easily without the loader arm sagging down. But if you want some more reach on your loader arm you can add the optional fly jib. To fit that you need to take out the last section of the main jib and it just pulls out once you disconnect the piston. After that you simply slide in the fly jib and reconnect. This is quite a big model when it's fully set up so let's do a dim check. And to the top of the main jib it's about 15 inches or 40 centimeters. With the fly jib, add on 4 inches or 10 centimeters. This is a great looking model of a heavy haulage truck by WSI. As usual, the Mammut color scheme always stands out, and the model has a very high standard of detailing. Most of the functionality is also really good with the short extension on the outriggers needing some support blocks to be used. Overall this is another very nice Mammut model which is rated as very good.